What? What seems to be the problem? Death. Death. Well, I'm afraid that's a little out of my jurisdiction. You... I want more life, fucker. For those who enjoy cyberpunk, it is a somber occasion indeed. Today marks the sad passing of perhaps the single most underrated actor in all of Hollywood or indeed internationally. A man most moviegoers probably couldn't pick out of a lineup, but if you ask anyone devoted to their craft, he doubtless adorned many a top 10 list among Tinseltown's elite. Rutger Hauer, Dutch dynamo extraordinaire who breathed life into Automaton in Blade Runner, who lent pathos to a shotgun-wielding hobo, who reminded us all to read the memo in Batman Begins, has passed from this mortal coil long since secure in his cinematic and humanitarian legend. More to the point as far as this show is concerned, it's really no exaggeration to say, along with Brad Dourif and the recently departed Powers Booth, Mr. Hauer was among my absolute favorite character actors in existence, and boasting a bafflingly vivacious career well into his eighth decade on this earth will be sorely missed, even by many who were until now unfamiliar with his name, because while the man made his bones in leading roles in independent sci-fi like the impossibly underrated Fatherland, post-apocalyptic sleeper Blood of Heroes, which inspired Elder Scrolls by the by, and Dutch masterpieces like Soldier of Orange and Turkish Delight in his dotage, Hauer became the Baron of the Bit parts. He played the president in the film adaptation of French comic Valerian. He oozed perverse piety as Cardinal Rourke in Sin City. Still unfamiliar with his work? Well, maybe you played Kingdom Hearts fucking three. Point being, the dude was in just about every damn thing, making him Michael Caine's villainous counterpart. Now, I know many of the Razor Fist Force faithful will be watching the man's movies of the coming days to re-familiarize yourselves with one of our cherished cinematic 80s icons, and to that end, I offer the following advice. If you must imbibe in a rutger -thon as you grieve over this awful news, as a humble bullshit merchant and fantasy fiend, I offer the following advice. While his work in Blade Runner is utterly without peer, and it's my favorite film of all time, no viewing of Howard's filmography may be marked complete without the impossibly undervalued 1985 Richard Donner masterpiece, Lady Hawk, young Michelle Pfeiffer, youngish Alfred Molina, Matthew Broderick, because by God it was the 80s and it's the law, and Rutger Hauer as a late replacement for Kurt fucking Russell, might I add. It's superb. The soundtrack is sensationally unconventional, embracing 80s synthscapes in lieu of a conventional orchestral score, and Rutger is absolutely exceptional, but what else is fucking new? Which brings us at last to Blade Runner. Now, beyond my personal attachment to the picture, which was well on display in my hour-long Film Noirchives episode devoted to the subject, Blade Runner was quite simply a shining moment in this man's career when he stood shoulder to well, the forehead with Harrison Ford, and came out on top, an inveterate scene stealer in his absolute element, to such an extent that he largely authored his very own death scene. With no time to labor the issue and a long night shoot at their back, Rutger intervened with a last-minute deathbed soliloquy he'd written on lunch break in his trailer, and so was born the infamous Tears in Rain speech. There was a real page of opera talk that, you know, is, is bad in any script. I don't care how you look at it. And this was high-tech speak that had very little bearing on anything, you know, that the movie had shown you before. So I, I just put a knife in it. We were two hours from dawn, because we're nearly in the summer months, I think, yeah? And it's already gone blue. So I go to the trailer and say to him, OK, you've got to get out there now, we're ready. And he said, look, <clears throat> I've got these words. He said, I've just been noodling with them over dinner. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. <laughs> Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. Rutger read those lines and then kept on going. And he had a bunch of other stuff, which included the tears in the rain and everything. There's only so much poetry you can get rid of, you know, and these images are so strong and then you know i came up with the line all those moments will be lost all those moments will be lost in time like <clears throat> tears in rain 
And then he looked at me very sheepishly like, I've been a naughty boy, you know, like, you know, he's an actor and he'd written these lines. The point is, Rutger did more than merely confer emotionality and warmth upon a character that is ostensibly a soulless machine, which, by the way, is how he played it, according to him. He gave soul to an otherwise antiseptic film. Rutger Hauer was, in every possible sense, the beating heart of the original Blade Runner, which is why, whatever your opinion of the sequel, when Rutger Hauer piped up in, I think, late 2017 and said Blade Runner 2049, quote, had no soul, it would behoove you 4chan fanfucks to perk an ear and actually listen. For no one knows better of what he speaks than the man who gave the original a goddamn soul transplant. And that's putting aside the innate badassery of a man well into his 70s, with diminishing career prospects due entirely to his age, speaking out against a film with a massive marketing push, because he sees an inferior film following it. Burning bridges with Warner Brothers thereby, who employed him several times in the last two decades by the by entirely, because he's compulsorily bound to speak the fucking truth. The unbridled fucking chattitude of it all. And then there's more modern fare. If you love the cyberpunk symphony that was Blade Runner, you may well be interested to learn that one of the finest offerings in the genre also involves Rutger Hauer, only it was a video game, released in just the last three years, in fact, by the name of Observer. A haunting horror hellscape populated by biomodified mind jackers and flooded by the digital manifestation of our deepest abiding fears made flesh. I recommended it at the time, but in case you're just joining us, Buy it, bitch, is a goddamn steal on Steam. Herr Hauer, you will be sorely fucking missed. Whether top of the bill or breaking out the odd bit part, you were an officer and a gentleman till the bitter end, my friend. And as a salutary send-off, I can think of nothing more fitting than a heartfelt God fucking speed.